Hey guys, what is going on? This is a pair of Helm. I am very excited to be bringing to you all a new model that I've never tried before from Helm. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Helm Bradley antique leather. Now let's open her up. Very nice, some spare laces. Very beautiful boot bags. This is a pair of Helm, love that. All right, so I'm particularly excited about this pair because at Helm, they name all their shoe models off of an employee and this one in particular is named after Brad Day. So I did a real boot talk with Brad Day who is the Helm president and CEO. So this is the shoe named after him. This is called the Bradley and I'm just in love with this model for many reasons. First off, as much as I love plain toes, I really, really love a cap toe. I really find the cap toe model exciting. I will leave a link to that interview in the description below if you're interested in hearing my chat with Brad Day. He is a super nice guy, super smart guy, and really takes his profession seriously, as is manifest in these amazing shoes right here. I've been really wanting to try out this teak leather for quite some time. By my eye, this is gonna be a veg tan, and it's gonna be that really nice, vibrant, orangey color that just glows in the sun. This is one of my favorite types of leathers, especially for the summertime. This is gonna be reminiscent of my Grantstone Diesels in Saddle Tan Veg Battalassi. Same type of an idea here. Real brilliant orangey glow. Real quick, get a size comparison. So yeah, Grantstone Leo last, the Helm 415 last. The Helm 415 is a half size smaller. Now, typically I would say that this last runs true to size, uh, particularly because my first pair of Helm were also on the 415 last, and that is going to be the Helm Zind boot in olive. And I absolutely love these boots. These, I do believe, run true to size. So they are. these are gonna be both on the 415 last. So these nines are gonna be a little longer. Now. My recommendation is to typically go true to size with this last, but because this is a summer shoe and I'm gonna be wearing these with really thin no-show socks, I could definitely afford to size down, not to mention all the other lasts that I've tried from Helm, I found did run the half size large. I think the 415 might be their smallest volume last, so I'm really happy with the size with these, particularly if I'm gonna wear them with thicker socks, but being that this is a summer shoe, I'm gonna be wearing these with thin and or no-show socks then, and probably wearing them with shorts and stuff like that. A lower volume size is gonna work out better. And that said, all the other Helm boots and shoes that I've tried in an eight and a half have worked out. The, in fact, I tried out their side zip model. I started with a size nine and they were too big. So I went down the half size to an eight and a half. These fit perfectly. So let's do a size comparison here, yeah. So these size nines, I, I believe the, the length scale for all their shoes are gonna be the same. So typically I, I'd say in a general sense, you could afford to take the same size in almost all their lasts. This Helm 415 last is just lower volume, but that said, like I said earlier, with a smaller sock, they're gonna be fine. Let's read off the Helm website. The Bradley is designed and made to last in both style and quality alike. A shoe that you'll get stopped and asked about more than every once in a while. The Helm signature white midsole and the rubber fine line bottoming give it just enough versatility to wear with denim and chinos, while the shape, pattern, and two rows of double stitching on the toe cap give it enough class to wear with a suit. Whether it's a collared shirt or a t-shirt, the Bradley is your go-to shoe. What's in a name? The Bradley is named after Helm's president, Brad Day. After a successful 16-year career in footwear, Brad joined the Helm team in early 2016 and were all better for it. Much like this shoe, Brad is both classic and current, a leader and a team player, always walking with integrity, and we are proud to be led by him. So this is gonna be a Blake rapid stitch construction. The upper is going to be made in supple full grain Balthazar leather in teak, the teak color. It's fully lined in black leather. And actually this lining, it actually feels kind of more like a fabric. Yeah, the lining in the back heel pad, I believe might be a fabric. Yeah, it feels like a cotton, but it does appear to be leather. So it might just be like the suede side. And then in the, throughout the rest of the quarter 
and the vamp, it's going to be smooth black leather. So for the midsole, we've got the Signature Helm White Composite Rubber Midsole, which is one of my favorite features with all these Helm boots and shoes. I love that white midsole. It's really a striking contrast. The sole is a fine line sole, which is another beautiful part of this shoe. I just love it. Basically what it is, it's a topi. They skive out a portion of the leather outsole to fit the topi perfectly, and then the topi is channeled and stitched in just so well, and I really like that. And then I really love the embossed helm logo here in the center, as well as we've got 10 nails in the heel, and then we have the insole, one layer of full grain leather that does not appear to be fiberboard, and then we've got the, the white composite rubber midsole, one, two layers of leather for the outsole, yeah, so basically for the heel, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight layers comprising the entirety of the heel. The sole work is really beautiful. The rubber portion of the heel comprises the very back of it. And then the forward region of the heel is leather. The rubber component in the heel is cut to allow one more layer of rubber. It both looks attractive. I see Alden doing this as well. It both looks attractive and stylish. You know, it's a unique appearance, but also the more leather down there, the more support you're gonna have, so that's good. And the rubber, obviously, is gonna offer more durability. The rubber portion is going to serve as to prevent heel wear. So if the heel was rubber, and you see this with a lot of rubber sold, with a lot of leather sold shoes, they still make the very back portion of it rubber, like in these Grant Stones here. They'll just do the heel in rubber, but the rest is leather for support. So, but that heel being rubber is going to prevent a lot of heel wear. The eyelets are going to be brass finished. These appear to be antique brass eyelets. For the laces, we've got two sets of 33 inch round wax cotton laces in brown. It's 415 last, one and a half pounds. It's fully resolable. Fits true to size. If you're in between sizes, we suggest sizing down. Yeah, so I, I agree. Premium fully lined upper for a custom fit. Full leather stacked heel for durability and comfort. Superior construction details. Double stitched upper for enhanced durability and extended life. Premium leather from the Krumenauer Tannery, which I covered in my other helm boot videos, as well as the history of that tannery. Very uh, fascinating stuff. It's from a German family, and uh, they, they make beautiful leather. Poured rubber insert and stacked leather sole for superior longevity. As always with Helm, they always do something extra to stand out. Typically, it's this white composite midsole, but as with their cap toe, so it is a true cap toe, and I know this because I see the extra layer of leather against the vamp, so no cheating there. And then so they do the double stitch on the cap toe, but then they do another double stitch. It really gives it a beautiful aesthetic. I, I think that's really sharp, and uh, that's not... Typically, you don't get an additional cosmetic row of stitching here. So that's, again, Helm just being Helm, standing out, finding a way to stand out. They always do. They do a phenomenal job. And then they always put a quote on the inner heel. So on this one says, do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. These retail at $245 which is a steal for what you're getting here. This is definitely Allen Edmonds quality where you can expect to spend, you know, around $400, but with Helm, you're saving a pretty penny. And this is, you know, even though it's Blake Rapid stitched, Blake Rapid is easier. The SPI isn't gonna be as high. I'd say we've got about four stitches per inch, but honestly, when it comes to the SPI, I hear a lot of guys talking about SPI and, oh, the more SPI, the better. That's not necessarily true. It's kind of like with your door. It's like, yeah, one lock, two locks are good on your door. But if you end up, you know, putting 20 locks on your door, it actually weakens the wood, right? You could overdo it with the stitching. And I could see where too much stitching actually starts to become more of a liability for the construction in that you're actually just piercing more holes in the leather than it needs like the way I stitch up my bags. My bags, I think, have six stitches per inch. I don't go any smaller than that. And typically, you'd only want a smaller stitch for like 
smaller items like a wallet or something of that nature. There's nothing wrong with stitch holes being more distant. It's not gonna actually compromise the integrity of the build of the construction at all. In fact, it makes it easier to resole because if there's less stitches to resole, there's less trauma on the leather when you resole it, if you think about it like that. The more stitches per inch, the more trauma is gonna that leather is gonna undergo when you resole it. So that's something to keep in mind. And that's not gonna be a big deal when we're talking about areas along the hull or the body of the shoe, like along here, the vamp, up the eyelet row facings, you know, those those areas you're not gonna deconstruct. It's it's the sole that you're gonna deconstruct. And when it comes to that, yeah, I actually like to see less stitches per inch, not more. That's just me. Anybody with a countering opinion, you can uh, like me up in the comments below. <laughs> All right, so let's get another little size comparison because these are my only 415 lasted shoes in an eight and a half. Like I said, my other ones are in a size nine and I'm very happy with the fit. But let's try the Parkhurst eight and a half yeah so so the the Bradley's yeah by my eye the size looks the same so take your Parkhurst size you know the Parkhurst is a slightly vol lower volume boot already and yeah by my eye it looks like the the 415 last on the Evan on the uh, helm are equivalent the Bradley's might be a little more narrow yeah they look to be a little bit more narrow less volume in that in the midfoot but like I said, that's okay. Truman 79 last. Yeah, same length. Yeah, it looks like the same length. But the Trumans are gonna be more rounded out in the toe and have more volume throughout the toe. I wouldn't consider these a low volume last, but that said, I could afford to go true to size and no complaints. I could also go down the half size and just wear them with thinner socks no complaints. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this review on the Helm Bradley. I'm super excited about this shoe in particular because I've just, I've always loved the Bradley model. They also sell it. It also comes in brown and it also comes in black. All are super duper nice. And if you like the way these look online, they are 100% more amazing up close. I agree. With that said, I will leave links to all the Bradleys in the description below. Give those a look if you're interested. It is summertime, and as much as I love to wear boots, I'm getting old and I have to wear shoes outside when it's like 90 degrees and up. I'm, I'm a wimp, I'm a wuss now. Um, <laughs> and so anyways, yeah, check out those links if you're interested in a perfect summertime shoe that will not break the bank and that you can take anywhere. Super duper versatile. Dress it up with chinos, wear them with denim, wear them with shorts, could even wear them with a suit, you know. I hope you guys enjoyed this review of the Bradley Shoe in Teak. I am stoked about them. Let's keep the love of shoes alive. I will see y'all in my next video.